Joining us now from Phoenix, Arizona, <laughs> is Marty Lurie. He's been covering the Giants at spring training. And, Marty, let's get right to it. Uh, when spring training began, there was a question about left field, and it appears now that we have our answer. Uh, absolutely, Dennis. Uh, Jared Parker has won this job. He is going to be the opening day left fielder for the Giants. Who backs him up is another question, but Parker's hit the ball hard. He's played well on defense. He's cut his swing down a little bit, and they like him. How much uh, rope are they going to give Jared Parker? I mean, he had a, a cup of coffee. Uh, Mac Williamson had a cup of coffee as well, as you well know. Uh, is he going to be under pressure to deliver the goods uh, sooner than later? Not really, because when you look at the rest of the team, if the rest of the team hits and does what they're supposed to do, they can carry him until he gets comfortable. So I say it depends on the rest of the team. Now, if the rest of the team don't hit, then, of course, you know, the pressure goes on Parker. But I think with the rest of the team doing what they're supposed to do, Parker gets a couple of months to try to settle in and play the way he's played down here. Boshi spoke highly of uh, Parker's defense as well. He says his uh, uh, plate at the plate, he's more disciplined. He shortened his stroke a little bit, as yeah. evidenced by a two-strike home run. I think he hit uh, yesterday, or perhaps <laughs> uh, maybe that was today. But in any case, have you noticed improvement in Parker? Well, absolutely. Uh, he's laying off pitches in the dirt, and that was a problem that he had. But, Dennis, he's got legitimate power. The home run you're talking about was in Peoria on Saturday, probably about 450 feet to right center field. He's done everything they've asked of him down here. He's focused. He's 28. He has no options. He is going to be the left fielder. They'll give him a couple of months, I'm sure, to get his spot in the big leagues. But as I say, if the rest of the team does what they're supposed to do, they can carry Jared Parker until he feels comfortable. One of the more intriguing questions, actually, is the backup uh, in the outfield. Michael Morris has played himself into the conversation. <laughs> I believe you interviewed him this morning. What's the situation with the backup position? Well, I think Michael Morse has put himself uh, on this team. I really do. I think he's hit the ball hard. He's played a few innings in left field. There really isn't a legitimate backup left fielder for Parker. Gorky Hernandez is on the roster as a fourth outfielder. But Michael Morse, if he makes this team, which I think he will, I think he's a perfect pinch hitter late in the game, he can come in late for Parker if they have to hit for him. But basically, uh, you're looking at Michael Morse, and you're looking at a host of other people who really haven't done much in spring training in the outfield. Aaron Hill is here. Uh, you've got people like that, Justin Ruggiano. So I think it's Michael Morse. I think he comes off the bench. I think Parker, Hernandez, Spann, and Pence are your outfielders. And one person off the bench who could be the extra guy, maybe it would be Aaron Hill, in a pinch could go into left field. Well, perhaps Aaron Hill, you led me into the next conversation. That's the log jam for the backup infield, uh, infield position. Connor Gillespie is a lock. Who's the other guy? Well, Gillespie is here. Uh, Hunley is here. I think Morse is here. Hernandez is here. I think it's going to be Aaron Hill. Uh, we love Jimmy Rollins, of course. He's a tremendous person. But he hasn't hit down here at all, and he's got to show that he can hit. Morse did that. Rollins hasn't. Uh, Gordon Beckham is someone who probably will not make the team. Uh, Jay Wong the, from Korea is a nice player, but he's not ready for the big leagues. Aaron Hill at 34 still has something left. I think he becomes the extra infielder. He can play third. He can play second. And if you had to put him out in left field. Dennis, this is a team that's heavy with left-handed hitters. Hill and Morse give you a couple of right-handed bats off the bench, and I think that's what the Giants want. And they also give them veteran uh, leadership off the bench there. Finally, uh, the fifth spot a in the rotation absolutely. was a question mark going <laughs> in. Now, Matt, Matt, Matt Cain hasn't put up great numbers. Who's going to win the fifth job? Well, I think Matt Cain gets it. Uh, he's healthy. He's throwing in the low 90s. But, Dennis, he gets hit, and we've seen this before. When he misses, he misses over the plate. But I don't think you take the job away from him in spring training. He would get the first start in San Diego. He'd get the next start at home against Colorado. I think those are the two starts he's going to have to show as a fifth starter. He can go through a major league lineup twice. I think Kane gets the job coming out of spring training. I think Ty Block 
is in this rotation by the time they start playing the Dodgers in late April. They've got 10 games with the Dodgers. I think Ty Block is going to be in that spot by then. And finally, how, how impactful is the financial considerations given that Kane is making a lot of money? Well, I think you give him the chance and you show him the respect that he's uh, been a giant for so long, money included. But you want to win games, and that's the key to this team. And Bobby Evans has said it. He wants his best 25. But you can't take the job away from Kane down here if he's healthy. So I think he gets the job being the veteran, and he gets his first couple of starts, and then we'll see where he goes. You said the best 25. Uh, you've been there. You've seen the team. Uh, what's your impression of yeah. them as they si you size up the National League West? Yeah, very, very good. Uh, they're deeper than last year. I think having someone like Morse and Hill coming off the bench, Gillespie's a lot better. But look, you look at Belt, you look at Panic, you look at Crawford, you look at Posey. These guys are now in sort of the prime of their career. They're a year older, but they're not over the hill. So I expect big things out of them. Pence is healthy, swinging the bat really well. Span is running very well, not translating to, into hits down here, but he looks okay. And maybe the wild card is Nunez. We haven't seen him for a whole year. He could lead off. Guy could hit 270, hit 15 home runs, drive in 75, and steal 20 bases. And he may be a leadoff hitter as this season progresses. So I think they're deeper. The four guys, the starting rotation with Matt Moore having the whole season certainly helps. But the key is Mark Melanson. Hasn't given up a run yet. We're going to see him in the WBC this week. And now they have a ninth inning guy they can give the ball to and get the job done. They're a stronger team. There's no doubt in my mind. They are a stronger team going into the season this year. Marty Lurie, you drove uh, all the way from Scottsdale into Phoenix. Or I believe, where's your house? Is it in Chandler? <laughs> Chandler, isn't it? Mesa. Mesa. Mesa, Arizona. That's right. Well, listen, Marty, I really appreciate you driving into Phoenix to do this interview and get us caught up on spring training. We will see you on opening day in San Francisco. Thanks, Marty. All right, then. It's two weeks from today. Come on. This thing is going quickly. You got it.